It is um, a true privilege to be here with all of you today. Um, what we are seeing is that Dubai truly is uh, becoming a, a capital of international uh, humanitarian aid. That's an achievement. And this is not just because of the amazing system that has been built here to get aid fast to those who need it the most. No, it is also because of your leading role in supporting new ideas and new partnerships. This is how we make humanitarian and development work, <coughs> work um, the best it can be for the people who are so desperately counting on us. I believe that this conference and this chain of conferences is just one amazing example of such leadership. Bringing together this group of extraordinary humanitarian leaders, it is at forums like this that we can come together to put everything we know together and find new ways to tackle the urgent challenge that we face. And of course, to my organization, Save the Children, there is not more urgent, not nothing more urgent than protecting children in armed conflict. In fact, that was how Save the Children was founded, founded almost 100 years ago. We were founded by an extraordinary English woman. She was called Eglantine Jeb, and she felt that we could not abandon the children of Europe to famine and war after the First World War. And since then, we have been working to protect children, and now we do so in more than 120 countries, uh, which of course includes more than 60 years in the Middle East. But sadly, our job is far from done. In the opening of the Declaration on the Rights of the Child, it states, Mankind owes to the child the best it has to offer. However, right now across the world, 15 million children are still living with violent conflict. That is 15 million children potentially suffering, suffering grave violations of this. Children killed or maimed, children made victims of sexual violence, Children abducted or attacked in supposedly safe places like schools and hospitals. Children denied life-saving humanitarian access. Children recruited by armed groups and forced into, con into conflicts they had nothing to do with. These children are actually experiencing the worst humani humanity has to offer. Many of these children do not pass their fifth birthday. During a crisis, we know that women and children are 14 times more likely to lose their lives than men are. 14 times. And right now, across just four conflict-affected countries, South Sudan, Yemen, Nigeria, and Somalia, four countries, conservative estimates say that 1.4 million children may die this year. And for the children who do survive, many suffer psychological damage. And long after the physical scars have healed, the emotional scars continue to destroy lives. Look at Syria. In Syria, these invisible wounds, that we, as we call them in Save the Children, are taking a crippling toll on its children as the war now moves to its seventh year. In St. Children, we just finished uh, the largest ever study during the serious conflict of these children's mental health issues. And the results are deeply troubling. Of the Syrian people we spoke to, almost 90% said that children have become more fearful, they suffer from sleepless nights, and they are nervous as this war has continued. 
Over half said that they knew children who are now turning to drugs to cope with stress, or children who have actually lost the ability to speak. Adding to these health problems is the devastating impact of the Syria crisis to children's education. Almost everyone we spoke to in Syria mentioned the lack of education as one of the biggest blows of this war. For the families of Syria, destroyed schools actually means destroyed futures. And we owe it to the children of Syria and all children in armed conflict to do everything we can to end their suffering. What does that mean in practice? Let me give you some initial thoughts as we begin this meeting. Well, we have to start with peace. And we have to start with charity. Children will never be safe if we cannot end the conflicts that rage around them. And that is why it is encouraging that UEA has declared 17 the year of charity and the UN Secretary General has declared 2017 a year for peace. We must rally, rally around that call to, to get action and to help the Secretary General make this a reality. We need to live up to the solemn promises that we have made to protect children. And this includes a, still, a system for holding parties to conflict to account for grave violations against children. And in this, of course, must be strong and independent. The UN Secretary must continue to name all violators and base this only on the evidence collected. And of course, the Special Representative for Children Armed Conflict needs our support to work with all listed parties to end violations. We should always also encourage efforts that strengthen the global consensus that exists around protecting children. Support for the Safe Schools Declaration to continue to grow. And if you are a representative of a government in this room today who have not yet signed on, I encourage you to do so. And if you are a member of civil society, I encourage you to encourage your government to do so. There is a great opportunity at the Safe Schools Conference in Argentina next week. Next week. Please do not miss it. We must put our money where our mouth is and commit more resources. More than 50%, half of those affected by conflict are children. When less than 5% of funding is spent on protecting, healing or educating these children. This has to change. To protect children we need more resources and we need more expertise. And these must always be ready to go as soon as we require them. Time equals life. The international community is already playing catch up in the Horn of Africa as well as in South Sudan, Yemen and Nigeria. We need to act faster and we need to act well before a crisis spirals out of control and get what's needed straight into the hands of frontline responders and local partners. To help children heal, we need to do more to address the physical and emotional scars that remain after a conflict ends. And one of the calls that we are making to save the children right now is for a new global commitment to support children's mental health and well-being in emergencies. Right now, an entire generation of children is at risk of serious long-term damage if, we do not, if they do not get the proper support. In order to educate children, the education cannot wait for needs our support. Otherwise, we will not give up to the promises we made in the UN last year to have children in emergencies back in education within a few months. Dubai Cares has set an, a great example by contributing to this whole fund and I strongly urge others to step up. Finally, 
As the ultimate goal of all our efforts, we must achieve the sustainable development goals. This is the only long-term solution to preventing humanitarian crisis and truly ending the suffering of children in armed conflict. To succeed, it requires new thinking and new partnerships, both of which will hope, I hope will come off this amazing conflict. Save the children, and indeed all child-focused agencies are absolutely committed to this. And it is in my, my hope that in 2017 we will achieve together new breakthrough to really move the needle in meeting this SDGs for children. And we all have a role to play. And we have to step up now. Inaction has consequences. Violence and conflict are a vicious generational circle. And to break it, we have to transform the experiences, perspectives, and prospects of those who are children today. Those children need all these tools to help shape the future. And whether they come out as leaders of tomorrow or engaged members of society, it surely must be our responsibility to ensure that all children will be able to play their unique role in their society. This should be a role that is not defined by violence and suffering inflicted on these children, but of course by their potential and their character alone. That is actually what is meant by the best that mankind has to offer. And we owe it to our children to deliver nothing less than that. Thank you very much.